Welcome to Alpaca May. It's April 30th, 2020. And yesterday morning, I went out for a little stroll. It was too dark and rainy and gloomy for me to take you with me, so I didn't. So it's been two months of uh, varying degrees of lockdown, and I thought we'd take a look back. If you remember, we started out with a handful of projects for you to do with your kids, including black jessup. Next, we went out on a chilly day to take a walk that I hadn't taken since my dog was put down. And we talked about hiking and that kind of thing. And then I asked you, what burdens do you bear? And I introduced you to my friends, Bucky and Camper 2020, who were both doing charity uh, events back in early March. Then we saw our friends and neighbors going into various stores and picking them clean. And I got a little mad about that. But I was determined to be an encourager to those of you who are subscribed or visit. So I brought you this little cutie pie who thought that milking cows was the thing to do as he was learning to talk. And then I even made a, a joke about the toilet paper and posted it on Instagram and it showed up a couple of times in my videos. And that brings us to the day. I just found out this morning, although I'd been alerted, oh gosh, a day or two ago that Walmart was refunding a sizable chunk of change that I had spent on surgical masks for myself and my family. So in the meantime, my girlfriend from high school took on a massive project. I'm not even going to tell you how many masks she committed to do, but she committed to making sure her family had masks and then her neighborhood uh, as well. And then also she has donated to a local hospital in the county we grew up in and they sent her a beautiful little gift basket as a thank you. All of these things as I was walking this morning got me thinking about something that happened 10 years ago. I don't talk about my personal life very much. It may seem like I do, but I really don't. Most of you who are regular subscribers know that I am a believer, but and you know that I have children, and you might even know that I have those children are grown and have gone on to, you know, make their own lives. They're adults, as they should. Um, you may not be aware that at one time uh, I was married, and that after our divorce. My husband passed away, and he passed away suddenly. He was very young, considering uh, the average expected age of people at this point in time. He was only 44, and he passed away from H1N1 virus, which led to pneumonia and, you know, lung failure, basically. Uh, it was very sudden. Nobody really understands how he got it, except that he worked in a public service industry where he was constantly exposed to, you know, the general public, as well as the fact that he was the music director for a synagogue in Metro Detroit. He, I have to say, at the time, he had achieved his dream. He wanted to be a cantor, and, and he was. And at one time, he was a Messianic believer, and we practiced Messianic form of Christian faith. Uh, at the time he passed away, he was in a regular synagogue, not in a Messianic synagogue, and had, uh, you, you might say, he had turned his back on Christianity, I think, probably under the circumstances, that's fair to say. It was tragic, his death, and sudden and very sad, and it disrupted our whole family, as you might imagine, even though we, my husband and I, were divorced for a period of time at that time. And so I empathize with people who are missing their loved ones. I empathize with people who are ill and afraid but I would encourage you to stop and think and take a second look at where you are and what your life is, is founded on. Put up a verse, a couple of verses from Proverbs 
This is called the chapter uh, that describes a virtuous woman or a woman of valor. And this, right now, these two verses describe my girlfriend. She's not afraid of, you know, impending disaster. She's covered herself. She's covered her family. She's looked after her neighbors and even the larger community. And she laughs at some of the crazy things like hoarding toilet paper. And while she's laughing, she's handing it out to people who can't seem to understand that their priorities are way out of whack. And I want to make a distinction here. She's not laughing at the people. She's laughing because she has taken care of her own needs and her household needs and has the ability to share with others. They're not rich people. Their business has been shut down for two months. But she can laugh because it makes her happy to help other people. And for the men out there that uh, are grumbling because I used a woman as an example of valor and honor, you might want to go read the story of Joseph. It's in Genesis uh, 39 through 47 is the big, you know, the big epic movie of Joseph. But you could start a couple of chapters earlier with the story of his father, Jacob, who was a wealthy Bedouin shepherd, but Joseph was not. Joseph was a slave. So what I'm trying to say here is that I'm encouraging you to take a look at what your priorities are. We're not going to return to pre-February or pre-January life. And now is a good time to reevaluate what's important. If the only conversation you have with someone that is intimate and real is when you've had you know, four or five beers or, uh, or you're stoned, then that might be something you want to think about. So what I'm really trying to do here is to continue to encourage you to think outside the box, to double down on what you can do for yourself. Plant a garden, um, you know, find a way to identify what other people need and provide that as a way of bartering or making a little cash on the side for yourself. So that's all I have for you today. It was a little walk down memory lane for me. I hope that you and yours are still in good health and good strength. See you soon.